This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. The X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All-Hit Radio! Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell, coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to uh, check us out online, www.exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And to find out what programming we have available for you, 724-365 on the Exxon Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. My guest this hour is Rick Borgia, and uh, as soon as you meet Rick, owner of Paint Party Columbus, you'll be amazed to discover his artistic aptitude, insightful communication skills, leadership presence, and compassionate demeanor. He channels all of his talents into his confidence-building, team-building, inspirational painting parties, which are built upon his core belief that every individual deserves a moment of success. Rick Welcome back to the Exxon, and tell me more about these paint parties. Well, hi there, Rob, and uh, thank you for having me on tonight, and um, hello to all the Exxon fans out there. Uh, the paint party paint parties have been around for about six or seven years all across the United States, probably Canada, I'm sure, and they're generally a social, uh, social media mm-hmm. type of... Uh, of, of event where individuals will come to a bar or a restaurant and experience uh, just a getting together and have some instructor guide them through a process of creating a painting that they will then take home themselves. It's usually uh, just really based upon just fun and interaction and an experience. Uh, but what I've found after doing these for a few Years, mm-hmm. uh, I worked for some other companies uh, that do that do this. I found that there was another component uh, that uh, that came to life uh, while uh, engaged in this process, while I was leading these these classes, and that was where there was a joint uh, a, 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 a sort of endorphin rush that all of the individuals would experience simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Because it's a group creative activity, the interactions between the people uh, really started to uh, give them some extra confidence. And what what I saw at the end was that their success in creating something that they never thought they could ever do was so uplifting to them that it really empowered them to go on and to, 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 to have a better uh, look, look at themselves, as, have more confidence, and, and more confidence and more self, self-esteem uh, in, in accomplishing something as simple as painting a flower or any kind of scene. And so I, what I started to do was I started to develop uh, artwork that was more instructional uh, in terms of allowing the participants to really challenge them 
And because once you start to teach somebody, it's just like teaching cooking. It's like teaching yoga. It's like teaching uh, a sport. Uh, you basically have to give somebody the guidance to start so that they can have some stepping stones in order to get to the final pr product. And what I found was that the, uh, the, the excitement that I felt from this activity actually became something of, of uh, an uplifting feeling for me that was empowering for me to be able to share that with these, with these folks and incorporate uh, many more elements of art and instructional elements of art. So I've sort of, it's sort of like a paint party on steroids. It's sip and paint is what they call these events. Um, I don't know. Do you have those in your in your in in Hamilton? I'm sure there's a few. Uh, no, a I, few I, I've iterations. Never, I've never heard of this before, Rick. You never heard of it? Okay, no, it's where, no. uh, it's, uh, you know I probably could look up something and find it find it up in your neck of the woods. So, uh, Rick, stand by. We've got to take our first sure. break. Exxon Nation, Rick. Borgia is our special guest of this of hour. His website is www.rickborgia.com. That's R-I-C-K-B-O-R-G-I-A dot com. And uh, Rick and I will be back on the other side of this two-minute break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't forget, if you'd like to find out all about the programming we have available for you on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. And you're listening to us around the world on iHeartRadio, Talkstar Radio, Mutual Broadcast Network, across Europe on Euro Radio TV and Radio X, and soon on the X Zone Satellite Channel. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Whatever you do, don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7, 365. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Hello, I'm Pete Marsh. With my daughter Justina, we will be presenting the new radio show, Too Good to Be True. If something seems too good to be true, it usually is. But with the help of Justina's amazing gifts, we're going to gain insight into questions that don't yet have complete answers. Have you wondered who built Stonehenge and for what reason? 
wire crop circles found in the same region as Stonehenge and elsewhere? Are crop circles a hoax or are they created with technologies that we have little knowledge of? Who built the pyramids in Egypt and also in other countries? How and why were they built? Was the Titanic switched with the Britannic as part of a gigantic insurance fraud or for more insidious reasons? What caused the Tunguska event when trees were flattened over an 800 square mile area in Siberia? Will the new insights be too good to be true? Well, that will depend on what you are prepared to believe. Please join us as we start on this journey together. For more information on Too Good To Be True, visit www.xzbn.net. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at songsandstoriesforsoldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. Rick Borgia is our guest to this hour, www.rickborgia.com. Uh, Rick, um, you've recently had a, a, serious, um, a serious heart operation. Would you like to tell us about it? Well, it was, it was an amazing experience. I, uh, I was on a call to mm-hmm. service a, a computer array. At, a, at an establishment, I went there at 8 o'clock in the morning, and I had a uh, pulmonary edema. Now, if you've never heard of that, that's when your lungs fill up with moisture and you cannot breathe. You're basically drowning out in the regular air. And it's come, it's, the onset of it was so fast, I was very fortunate because the place that I was, mm-hmm. they had a full... Uh, first aid emergency kit with the nitro pills with the whole deal. They saved my life and got the EMT there within seven minutes and they rushed me to the hospital and stabilized me. And uh, three days later, they did open heart surgery on me to replace a valve in my heart, which I was, which no one knew that it was defective. Up to that point, I had no warnings. There was no, no, no symptoms or anything. That that I had the attack, I had sat in my bed and I was contemplating the day and I had a white light in my head, a white glowing light in my body and it expanded all throughout my brain, in my head, in my body and that would last for about 15 or 20 minutes. I did not know what, it, what I just experienced some kind of angelic exper- uh, passing through me. And uh, I was very fortunate because I didn't. This this accident did not happen while I was driving at seventy miles an hour to to the location. So the actual heart operation itself, I was able to remotely view the operation as it was taking place, because I prepared myself to remotely view my whole body being operated on by the doctor. And they had the they separated my rib cage. Uh, they cut the sternum. They separated it. They have the little rector sets mm-hmm. that they put inside the body to hold the rib cage open, and they they do the. It was just the whole thing was just so science fiction, and it just wow. happened like out of the clear blue. So it was almost like, wait a minute, are you kidding? This was, uh, and, and there's many hundreds of thousands of people out there who have had this experience. We never really find out too much about the details of it because it's it's a it's a very standard thing. So I was just fortunate to be able to be present with the whole experience throughout the whole thing. And I will tell you, the healthcare system that I experienced was at the highest level of care 
and the compassion of the people involved in taking care of me and the technology involved uh, just made for a terrific outcome. So uh, I have a very fast recovery. I am now um, just two, just a little over two months past the operation, and I have such power and such uh, feeling of uh, well-being and uh, a feeling of wanting to get – I have another chance. I have another chance. I almost died. So I am so, so relieved and also – very, very motivated to be part of other people's successes, however they might, however that might be con- considered, however that uh, to think, what that could possibly be, whether it's a uh, looking at you know a, a way to advance your career, whether mm-hmm. it's looking at a way to avoid any kind of damage with your body. Uh, those are the things that are that are motivating me now. And inside the art world that I that I work in, I'm less interested in making pretty things for the walls than I am with uh, guiding people through a process that allows them to feel that they have accomplished something. Just even a little tiny accomplishment can be such a very, very powerful motivating factor for people. At any time, do you think that you had a near-death experience? Well... During this during this attack, mm-hmm. because it was only about six minutes long, I, I, I was driving to the place. I got to the place. I didn't feel bad badly, except that when I got out of the car, I started to hear a crackling sound in my lungs, and I mm-hmm. thought, "What the heck is that?" Uh, within five minutes of that, by the time I walked to the door of the establishment that I was scheduled to be at, I could barely stand up and I could hardly breathe. And as the time went on, my breath became shorter and shorter and shorter. And I reverted to the reptile brain was the only thing that was left for me. I just could not see. Uh, I could only see in one dimensional. The things became black and white uh, for me. I did not experience full hypoxia, but they said I had a stroke. I did not experience anything other than being to the point where two or three more minutes of that same experience, I would have, they would have lost me there. So that's as near death as I can. Rick, are you there? And the mental atmosphere. Yes, I am, sir. Okay. You're breaking up on us, Rick. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, The mental, the, my, the mind and the body just Mm -hmm. turned into another, another uh, entity altogether. It, It became reduced to a single, uh, a top and bottom, a, 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 a beam and a, and, a, and a rod, a rod and a, you know, a light and a, yeah. and a, and a pole. It, it was amazing. So uh, the whole process of me, as they, as they brought me back to life and as they, uh, as they uh, stabilized me, was, uh, that was an eight-hour experience, which was at least as traumatic as the actual attack itself. So the whole process was uh, white knuckles, all the way down uh, to the wire where just one more, two more minutes, three more minutes, I would have uh, lost blood flow to my brain and uh, went unconscious and and possibly uh, lost my life at that point. So all of these things combined uh, were powerfully spiritual, motivating, spiritual, but also because I am, a conscious of other activities going on in the, in the universe around me, at least I think I am, as I told you a long time ago, I think paranormal is normal. Yep. I mean, there is there is just so much. The, uh, your, one of your guests is synch- the synchronicity, uh, super synchronicity, the guy who wrote that book. Uh, some of the things are happening e- even as we speak in the world today, mm-hmm. just – defy you know regular logic and there there is there is other things in, involved in how we are experiencing our lives and how we are interacting with each other so those are the things that came that I came away with and I'm still ha- it's still happening to me because I am so freshly re- remade mm-hmm. it, it, it I don't know I, I'm not sure I'm not sure how else to describe it except that uh, it is a uh, catapulting uh, into an into the future, I feel younger. My skin, something happened. This experience, and I was, I'm actually very fortunate that I went through it because we would not have known 
about my broken valve because I was in such good shape anyways before the accident. That's another reason why I had uh, a very fast recovery. So all in all, Rob, uh, I will tell you, I'm a very blessed and lucky and, and uh, forward-looking person. I've always been that way, but now it's just it's a bard. Um, you were saying earlier that you were able to prepare yourself to remotely view the operation that, that you went under. How did you prepare for this? Well, you know, as you know, I was um, involved with the Monroe Institute, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I actually have a, pro a, a, a music uh, album that's released on the Monroe label, Hemisync, and uh, that's available for purchase uh, or for review. It's Rick Borgia, Hemisync, and you can see uh, that particular product there. But when I was involved with, uh, with the Monroe Institute, I got involved with the out-of-body uh, experiences and with exploring other realms of uh, existence that were outside what we would normally call our, our world. Mm -hmm. And uh, the remote viewing was simply something that I have done over the years in a number of situations. Uh, there are, for example, the uh, Malaysian airline that went down. I really, really, really made an effort to try to locate that particular uh, item based upon just sheer concentration. What I did for the operation, because I was so grateful that I was being cared for in such a high, high quality way, and I had so much confidence in my surgeon that I uh, was able to free myself from any worry or fear. So I was... F so going into the operation, I was already... Fearless. I knew they were going to cut me open, and that was probably the biggest thing that I was afraid of was the scar was being cut because I've never really been cut open in my life. I have all my parts. I have everything. So when I prepared for this remote viewing, what I did was I had about six hours before the operation actually took place, and I, got, I was awakened about 4 o'clock in the morning to be brought down. And I spent about two hours arranging my my mind and my and my attitude that I would be able to put myself above the operating table, ten to fifteen feet above the operating stage, to be able to observe my body being handled. And and I noticed these some of these characteristics of the operation. Because I had a bonding, I had a bonding experience with my surgeon, that was extraordinary. I had a bonding experience with my surgeon. So if anyone else would have been switched at the last minute, I, I, I might have screwed it up. But my surgeon was gave me so much confidence that it would be okay. So I was able to just rise above. After I went to to uh, after they put the anesthetic on me. Mm -hmm. I simply, I simply moved above my body and observed. Of course, it's not clear, but the memory of it after I woke up really came back to me about two or three days later that I saw the little erector set and how they had the thing set up. I have never even seen any of these uh, procedures before, and we can't really see them because you have to go to medical school to, see, to really see all those things. They're not on YouTube, for example. Um, so that's really what happened. It was it was just a just a just the whole operation, and upon awaking from from uh, the operating of twelve hours later, uh, you know I I was I was at peace. I was at peace because I had a new I had a new lease on life. I had a new lease. I had a, I had a chance to I had a chance to do some things that I still need to do. So that is really uh, the story that how that remote viewing really just played the fact that it's possible, it, that I felt that myself it's possible for me to do that, to be able to project my, my uh, consciousness outside of my body. So whether or not that's, uh, you know, we can do, I can't show you a videotape of what yeah. my experiences were. We can't, there was no audio recording of it. There was no 
uh, there was no news reporters there to to uh, to report on it. So it's really about my own internal process of of acceptance. All right, Rick, stand by. We've got to take our. Uh, next break, okay. Exonation. Nation, Rick Borgia is our guest, www.rickborgia.com, and I'll be back on the other side as we continue investigating the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. are our personal gateways into infinite wisdom. Don't miss Shamanic Counselor and Indigenously Trained Dream Decoder Sandra Corcoran's inspiring book, Shamanic Awakening Between the Dark and the Daylight. This remarkable work chronicles Sandra's 35 years of experience with diverse wisdom keepers and her initiations throughout the Americas and across the British Isles, Turkey, Greece, and Egypt. Sandy's knowledge of symbology, psychology, and myth influenced her dream blog and workshops. Sandy offers private tarot readings, international journeys, a meditative CD, as well as her book, Shamanic Awakening, to encourage you as you navigate this earthwalk, creating a deeper connection to yourself and all that is. Find this and more at Sandy's website, starwalkervisions.com. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. How would you like to be able to read other people's minds? Well, the next best thing is here. When you know how to read a person's name, you know how the person thinks, feels, and behaves. Each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence. Our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime. Nemology science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created Nemology Science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today. Know the name, know the person. Or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. Hello, I'm Justina Marsh, and with my dad, Pete, we are going to present a new show called Too Good to Be True. Together, we are aiming to discover more truths about this world and beyond. Do you have unanswered questions about the world? Do you ever wonder about aliens, conspiracy theories, or the universe? There are many shows discussing subjects such as pyramids or UFOs, but we want to relay this information based on our own research, including from spiritual means. Hopefully, listeners will be helped with their own beliefs and will appreciate the psychic insights that add to the previous research and information. We both look forward to sharing this insight and beginning this journey with our listeners. Visit xzbn.net for more information about when to listen.
Rick Borsha is our guest, www.rickborsha.com. And Rick, what was it in your life that that drew you to the metaphysical realm and uh, the Monroe Institute? Rob, I grew up in a very unusual world Mm -hmm. of dimensional religions, uh, the Catholic religion. I was an altar boy. I strived to connect with Jesus. I strived to connect with God. I was able to sense higher higher beings uh, around me. I have always been uh, aware that there are uh, spiritual presences. I call them rivulets. Uh, they're floating through the air. Uh, it's since I was a child, I have, have recognized that there are other activities going on around me and certainly other people that are not e- extraordinary. For me, they're ordinary. And so, so when any, any opportunity I had in my high school and teenage years as I was studying art and I was being in, in introduced to other cultures – and other uh, other ways of worshiping, and other ways of seeing the world, and other ways of of experiencing science, and 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 meeting where the science and and spirit meets. Those are the things that excited me, and and uh, incorporate those into the activities that I've been involved with. Um, that's basically what's what's sets me in my mood of. Today, what I, what I, where I am at at this moment uh, is a collection of all these, all of these, what normal people would call paranormal, but mm-hmm. I, for me, it's just totally okay. It's really okay. Synchronicities, uh, uh, p- uh, precognition, precognition for me has been throughout my whole life. Uh, writing songs 25 years ago that are appropriate now. Uh, Writing passages in my in my journals that are uh, were were uh, forecasting uh, things that are happening in the in the world today, just as a just as a personal commentary for myself. Uh, so so I have the the I have always pursued that, and in, in, I've been in the uh, uh, Sanskrit uh, study of of Vedic culture mm-hmm. and some of the uh, uh, let's say uh, Indian. Uh, Hindi uh, historical s- spiritual experiences. So everybody has a different take on it, and it all ends up being, to me, it's all the same. It's just different vestments. Uh, the Catholic Catholics are wearing different clothes than the uh, than the uh, than the Jewish uh, uh, clergy. The everybody's just wearing a different. It's just different fashion and different uh, different interpretation of the same. Spirit, the same singular power that drives everything that's here for us, and all you have to do is you look at nature in any part of the world; it's the same. It's not; it doesn't change the vestments of the nature. Uh, it just changes the types of trees that are there. That's all. But how can we relate nature to human beings? You know, we can. How can we? How can we relate a, the the tree, the flower, the you know, the other? the other parts of nature that are spread around this planet that are similar. How can we say, well, this is why we humans are the way we are, because we're basically flowers or basically trees. You know, like how do, how do we relate to that? It's just a different uh, lifespan cycle and the different waves of energy, the waves of energy for a, a small creature, like a, a very tiny bug made that wave of, of, of their lifespan, maybe only two or three days, or maybe even only twenty minutes uh, long. Where some 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 creatures are, you know, they're they're going to last for hundreds possibly, and certainly some of the creatures that we call trees mm-hmm. can last for thousands of years. Uh, and everything is pulsing with the divine energy or universal energy, as we as we can call it. If uh, you know, however you're disposed, and all those choices of words are. Um, uh, just arbitrary to me. But if that's the case, Rick, why is there still, after thousands of years, all of the 
all the trials and tribulations that humans have with each other that animals and nature do not? Because it is fun. Because it is exciting. Because we... violence is exciting. Because, because violence and, and exercising your, your physical power has always been the uh, show of the masculine energy and the, the uh, cultivating of the, of the caring spirit has always been the, sh- the power of the feminine energy. And it's enjoyable. We don't have uh, – it's enjoyable to go to a sporting match and get so worked up to the level of where you're actually thinking of doing some harm to, your, to the opponents on the other side way because of the because people get jacked up they get their energies their blood gets pumped up through their bodies and their and their their hormones get excited so that is really the reason why we do this it, it seems to me that it's an addiction that um, can be t- treated just like any other addiction whether it's a, whether it's uh, whether it's a sign of honor and it's all mixed up with honor and loyalty and, and devotion and it's all mixed up with uh, sacrifice and uh, and uh, suffering. Uh, so it seems like uh, uh, you know we're de- we're we're destined to to continue these dances because it's first of all now it's become built into the commercial world of our of our lives. The commercial world of our lives is rampant with violence. There's uh, you know if most most posters that are selling movies have somebody with a gun in their in their hand on that poster for that movie uh, or some kind of explosion or some kind of something that excites the audience because that the more excitement for the audience, the more chance that that commercial radio or that commercial television or that commercial movie is going to be more successful. Yeah, but Rick, how can, how can, how can we say that, you know, it, it's the excitement, it's the adrenaline, it's this, that, and the other thing when we've seen so much terror and so much pain. For example, look what happened the other day in Manchester, England. You had no, these. You had this. You had this. This concert that was filled with children. Children of uh, you know, and what? Twenty-two children dead. Sixty-four injured. Twenty of those sixty in critical condition. The 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 child who did the damage was twenty-two years old. Still a child. No, still no. A, I, I I don't buy still that. Still a child. That, that's not a child. That that that's a monster. I, well, that the, monster the, has no right being on this earth. I'm well, glad he the, blew himself the, up. That is well. That's that's the that's the reaction that we would we 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 need to have that reaction because of its of its absolute uh, hideousness yeah. of of the act. The hideousness of it is is, is is insane. But you really, for example, you know. Uh, terrorist crimes and i they're really not that uh, i have to think back when i was 22 uh was i you know uh, impressionable could i have jumped over to the uh uh students for democratic society as or any of those uh occulty things back in the 60s that were begging for people to jump in on there that were going to tear down the society that was built around us they did not have the same concepts of what what in fact were do what they were doing, mm-hmm. but I'm not trying to I'm not I don't want anybody to get off the hook for anything. Of course, it's a hideous, most hideous thing in the world for for somebody to do that. However, there it, there was a method that came that brought that person to that point, and it wasn't logic, and it wasn't and it doesn't ha- didn't have anything to do with education, and it didn't have anything to do, but it did have something to do with words and propaganda. And power and the power of inf- and of the elders, the elders that were in control of those ideal ideology. So it's elders, people who are our age, Rob, people who are o- over fifty, who are driving this stuff because they are still stuck in their and their youthful, uh, ob- obliterated uh, sense of what what should be happening in the world today. The, this is just uh, you know it's absolutely to me it's. I can hardly catch my breath from it. The sadness yeah. when when these activi- when these things happen, I feel the spirits of these of these f- individuals. I feel they're, they're floating 
away from that scene, just floating across the, the atmosphere. They, they didn't have a chance to even figure out whether or not they should do this or do that. They, with no warning at all. So they had no knowledge. So their spirits were still vibrating and very, very active. They were in the middle of a concert. So those spirits just traveled directly right out of that building and started to go across the land in every direction. So those spirits are floating around. They're, they're like little rivulets of, of little pockets of, of spiritual air that are just in the atmosphere. We can't see them, but they're affecting. So this is the, you know, to me, every, every, every stopgap that they could do mm-hmm. seems to be like, what can they possibly do when that when these individuals are are so brainwashed or so compelled, I mean, they're they. I just can't even imagine what that's like. Yeah. You know, I can't imagine what it's like to to put a knife into somebody. You know, you you and I, we didn't we weren't brought up that way. Nope. We weren't brought up on a violence. You know, uh, violence trumps everything else. Uh, we were brought up to be considerate and to be to be kind and compassionate and to to be helpful. Uh, but that's not the the, the whole gang. You know, you, you were is- you were using the example of you know this guy was only twenty two years old. You know, and and when you were twenty two, when I was twenty two, I was sitting in a police car wearing a badge protecting people. You were you were a, you were a policeman, so you were you were you matured in a sense that you were you you took up a mantle that was, uh, you know, an honor an honor for you to to. To serve, but you were still you were there. You were brought up to serve, and you were brought up to be helpful and and protecting people. I think the so fact this, that I wasn't brought up, or my parents weren't brought up in in the desert in a dead end land with a dead end opportunity with a dead end religious philosophy had a lot to do with it as well. We weren't taught exactly hate. We were taught that's love. That's exactly right. Look, yeah. where, look, where, look what the uh, look where the seeds of these things are happening from. Uh, you know, there's when. Let's face it, if, we, if you're up against the wall, we don't know that. We, we don't know that experience. I know the, a, a little bit of that experience because I'm, even with my own family, I know my, a little bit of, ex, of that experience by being closed out, by being shut out of decision-making uh, concerning certain uh, elements in, in my family uh, that made me feel desperate and it yeah. made me feel like I could not what there was nowhere to turn there was nowhere to turn so when there's nowhere to turn what do you do you're you're vulnerable you're 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 liable to do something you're liable to engage in risky behavior put yourself at risk and pe- other people at risk we see it every day in the well, in the uh, you know we've got to take it we've got to take our final break here rick but all i'm glad is that i was brought up in a christian house and we we were taught the 10 commandments we went to church we believed our philosophy, religious philosophy, was not one of hate. It was love, compassion, and peace. And I can't understand these people in today's society who think that the right thing to do is to let the hate, the religious philosophies I'm... that hate, continue. In fact, to protect them, their rights. Yeah. Ah, we'll be back on the I... other side of this break, my friend. Don't go okay, away. Okay, my friend. Okay, my friend. Are you curious? Do you want to learn more about how the world works and have fun at the same time? Study coincidences with me, Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD, on my Connecting with Coincidence radio show here on the XZBN network. Listen to Jungians theorize, statisticians randomize, true believers evangelize, while I categorize. I dance to the rhythm of coincidences. People who experience me see more of them. Maybe something on the show matches a thought in your mind. Let us know. Expand your mind to the weirdness happening around you. Synchronicity spoken here, there, and everywhere. For more information, put Connecting with Coincidence in your search engine and find my website, my social media sites, and my blog. This 
This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. There's a legend shared by many indigenous cultures of a time when the nations were cast to the four corners of the world. Each nation was given a body of sacred knowledge that held a different portion of the truth to preserve. True reality could not be known until all the nations reunited, combining the information. If a single one was missing, the world could not be reborn and darkness would prevail. The Science of Magic Radio is dedicated to reuniting the sacred knowledge. With the understanding, none of us has all the answers, but together we can open new perceptions and possibilities. Through our combined vision, the world can be reborn into a place where darkness no longer prevails. Join me, Gwilda Wiecka, and the Science of Magic daily on the Exxon Broadcast Network, xzbn.net, or visit us at thescienceofmagic.net. Exonation, Rick Borgia is our special guest, www.rickborgia.com. Um, now, let's get away from the politics because it just angers me because the, I know. the political I know. world has only one thing in mind, and that is to make money. And the only way that they can make money are by opening up the gates and saying, come on in, we want your money. We don't, we'll pay you. And in fact, what politicians do today when they open up the doors to um, to mass immigration, and they feed these people, they house these people, they give them money, they, they're a drain on the social system. But what they're doing is the politicians are actually buying votes. Well, it's, uh, you know, as, as you said, let's get away from this politics yeah. thing because we could spend 100 days in a <laughs> row and, and still not come up with the right, with the right uh, solution other than yeah. uh, being critical of the, of the system that's going on. Well, you see, I, I have a solution. I, I have one, but okay. my government won't listen to me. Okay. <laughs> Close the borders. Close the borders okay. to immigration until you've taken care of every Canadian that is homeless, every Canadian that is hungry, 
every Canadian that needs clothing, every Canadian that needs a better education, before you let anyone else in the country take care of the Canadians first, especially, especially the members of the Canadian Armed Forces. Yeah. So there you go. Sure. Absolutely. Hey, listen, I love your uh, motto. Tell me what consumer lives matter means. Okay. Well, uh, we know what my own philosophy is that just why make any slogans up at all mm -hmm. for, for, good, for goodness gracious sakes? Because slogans help unify people in some kind of uh, effort to make a, uh, a, a, a statement. Yeah. Uh, and that's really what it is. And so when Black Lives Matter was uh, in instituted or invented or mm -hmm. created and it caught on, it, it caught on because of social media. Social media makes these things. Did you ever hear of Throwback Thursdays, for example? Nope. No? No. Okay. Well, on the Facebook thing, Throwback Thursdays. In other words, there's certain things get initiated and then they take off mm -hmm. uh, for really only the reason of, of the uh, viral social media. So what consumers' lives matter is really, at the end of the day, that's really all that matters is because the industry in the commercial world uh, really uh, operates on, uh, on, a, on a, the basis of, of profit and making money. And that's good. That's a good thing. But so it's sort of tongue-in-cheek kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Black lives matter? Oh, yes, sure they do. All lives matter. Yeah, exactly. Let's forget about the matter. Yeah. Okay? The consumer's lives matter. It's my take on it. It's sort of like a Dadaist, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a sort of a, uh, a pun on, on, the, on the concept, really. Right. Maybe, it's, maybe it's disrespectful, but you know what? I didn't, I didn't create it as a disrespectful thing at all. So it's not disrespectful. For no. me, it's a pun. Yeah. That's See, all it is. You're, you're not a disrespectful person, Rick. I, I've known you for years. I respect you as a person. You're one of the most gifted artists I've ever had the pleasure of meeting, both musically and artistically. You know, so I know that there's not a mean bone in your body and that you do things to help people. You always have, Rick. You always have. And it's so nice to, to see that you are still you. It's amazing. <laughs> and you know, I, I, do, I, I will tell you that it's empowering to speak with you again, Rob. It's empowering and, and, and motivational. And I appreciate you. I appreciate you. And I, and I felt all along that uh, your, your place in this universe that we have right now is so valuable I love I you know I love the programming that you do. I like your investigative style. I'm I'm not 100% in agreement with you about politics. Hey. That's okay. Yeah. That's really okay because sure. I respect you as a person. And I really, you know, wish the best for you and Laura and uh, I I really hope that uh, you can conti continue this and that uh, I will be able to s day again come on and oh. and bring something of value to your listeners, uh, that's even, you know, something that's a, a great work. Let's, for, let's, you let's always, put it that you, way. You always do, Rick. You always okay, do. Your buddy. positive attitude, your, your inspirational way of looking at life. You know, it, it, that is Rick Borgia. That is Rick Borgia. But let me ask you something, Rick. As an artist, as a, as a thinker, you're like you're a modern-day philosopher, let's face it, buddy. Is social media too powerful it's 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 so pervasive you cannot participate in the commercial society without being involved with that if you want to be away from all this stuff mm -hmm. and it's possible you can still do it you can still go to Maine you can there's parts of Montana where you can go and <laughs> And, and if you get your if you get your stuff ready, certainly Canada has so many beautiful places that you can go and be away from it all, and it is possible still to do that. But if you're going to live in society, that is a requirement that you are engaged with those kinds of elements, and and to see that the uh, one of the things that you know I I I, can't, I have to respect Facebook, 
And I, I'm sorry to use a, a, the name on That's the radio. Okay. I don't know if I'm allowed to sure do that are. or not. Sure, we just gave them uh, a free but, plug. There you go. Yeah, but it's an entity that is 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 so pervasive and that it it it, <laughs> it is a commercial business, mm -hmm. but it, it houses all of this personal, dramatic, emotional information and mode and power. So it's a commercial entity that is in invested in all of everyone's emotions so it's that's kind of i don't know i'm not sure if these social scientists you know will weigh in this 15 20 years from now if it will our, our interactive behavior in person mm -hmm. uh you know will it i don't know i i get notices all the time saying whose birthday it was. I forgot I was yeah. this person's friend. You know? Well, I what know I can't understand, might... what I can't understand, Rick, is these people who take pictures of what they're eating in a restaurant. I don't give a damn. Like, <laughs> like you know, don't you have a life? Is this your cry for attention? Are you a needy person? Do you have mental issues? Like, do you really think that anyone else gives a damn about what the meal that you're going to eat at the restaurant looks like? Get a life. Depend depends upon the stature or the status of that person and in, in relationship to their friends, whether or not they are respected for their choices, whether or not they are respected for their influence, whether or not they're respected for their uh, their camaraderie. Mm -hmm. So it's really it, it, it it's really an activity that and it does not it's not necessary. If it if it disappeared tomorrow, the world would not be a sadder place. It would not be a a more terrible place. Right. It's simply a device, just like all of the, you know. But our, we are a part of a device too. We are the beginning. The radio is the beginning of the device, but the radio is still the strongest, the strongest component of mm -hmm. all media. Radio is still the strongest component of all media because of the nature of what it is. It's human voices speaking without any visual information, which allows the listener to make up their own visual information that yep. goes along with that voice. And that is the, that's the, the radio. And the radio still is so powerful and influenced our whole election in this country Ooh, last big. year. Gigantic. I mean, forget about it. So, yeah. you know, I, I, I have to say, you know, we, we didn't invent these things. Mm -hmm. They came along because technology is just developing uh, at a, such a rapid pace. And then all you have to do is now you can go to a store Rob, you and I can go to a store and buy an HD camera equipped drone for $100 mm -hmm. and be able to fly it over our neighbor's home and take videos <laughs> for less than $100. Now, we have this technology available to us. What do the guys who have billions of dollars, what technology is available to them? That is a great question. You know, years ago, I had and Pastor Harry Walther on the show, and he said, okay. Rob, People believe the mark of the beast is 666. He said they are wrong. The mark of the beast is www. I'm going to laugh at that one. I'm not going to cry. But uh, I, I, I guess that's a pretty that's a pretty profound uh, that's pretty profound. That's for sure. But what what However, is the, what is science telling us? You know like you, we've got smartphones, we have smart cars, we have smart TVs. We have smart this, we have smart that. I truly believe that smart cars make dumb drivers because it dumbs the senses. I, people walking down the street looking at their iPhone instead of where they're going, walking into bloody uh, lampposts or into buildings. It's, 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 Come it's, on. A, it's a phenomena that is just going to continue in the opposite way. And it's also given me a thought. You, you know how the depiction of alien, uh, alien life... Uh, especially some of the Roswell, the depiction of the long fingers mm -hmm. and the big eyes. Yeah. Well, those long fingers and those big thumbs with those big pads on them, those were all developed because they needed to push buttons. The big <laughs> eyes needed to be able to see those screens. Everywhere we go, there are screens now. Everywhere we go, we got screens in our hands, yeah. screens at McDonald's, screens at the gas station, screens, 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 screens. Everywhere we go, there's speakers firing down from above our heads. Except we don't have screens here to let us know that we can have more time. Rick, we're out of time. I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. And uh, we'll get you that link as soon as we can. Exo Nation, Rick Borgia has been my guest. www.rickborgia.com. 
I'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center right here in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. 